I think this is the last of the tomatoes I'm going to package up. These ones are just a regular kind of red slicer. And uh, that's a lot of seeds. Very deep. Um, so, I'm going to get that done. Now, I probably had about uh, 30 different kinds of tomatoes that I packaged up this year. So, I mean, that means I ate 30 different kinds of tomatoes last year um, and with James. Now, we, we go through a lot of tomatoes. James loves tomatoes. So, when I plant tomatoes, I don't... Um, I can't plant nearly as much as we can eat. We still have to buy them. So I don't know. I have bought some books before that make suggestions on how many tomato plants or how many carrots you will need. And it's ridiculous because I've never met anybody who likes tomatoes as much as James. But... Um, I can tell you he doesn't like parsnips, he doesn't like turnips, so reading somebody else's suggestions of how much you're going to eat of whatever vegetable is ridiculous. Um, and also, if you think about it, um, you can, you can, you won't really know how many tomatoes you need. You just won't until you've grown tomatoes in the past and you're still buying things and then after a few years you're like wait I'm still buying canned tomatoes or I'm still buying um, ketchup or whatever and you realize wow I go through even more tomatoes than that so I don't know plant what you want at first and I've also read um, other things in books which I think are ridiculous um, a lot of authors will say, plant what you eat, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it doesn't make sense for me to plant a whole lot of parsnips when James isn't going to want to eat them. Um, but at the same time, if you can buy carrots from the store for um, a very low price and you're happy with the carrots that you're buying from the store or wherever you're buying them from, uh, why plant carrots? I mean, you may go through a ton of carrots, but you only have so much room in your garden, unless you're on a farm and, and you have lots of room for garden, right? But if you're growing in the city, you kind of have to be choosy about what you want to plant. So you might say to yourself, well, you know, I don't plant, uh, or I don't eat a lot of basil right now, fresh basil, but boy, if I had fresh basil in my garden, yeah, I'd eat it and go that way because you know that you would spend a fortune buying fresh basil and it's fairly easy to grow so and same thing with fancy tomatoes if you uh like these are just a red slicer it's not that fancy but um say some burgundy colored cherry tomato well that's you'd spend a lot for that so um, try to think that way and um, and also gardening for yourself gives you an appreciation for the work that other people go through to garden and um, like me mentioning that we still have to buy loads of tomatoes so anybody walking by my yard and even if they're just picking one tomato well that's how many thousands of people are going to walk by my yard and pick one tomato or pick a few cherries um, and that's food that, that I have to then go buy so that, that's really inconsiderate of people to do something like that when especially when you're walking by a a poor neighborhood or whatever or you know if anybody is growing vegetables in the city or some sort of produce it's not for ornamental purposes I mean I nobody grows a tomato because they think wow tomato that's attractive I'm gonna go for that rather than a dinner plate delphinium or, or dinner plate dahlia um, anyway 
So, um, don't, don't steal people's tomatoes. Plant your own. Learn how much you need to eat yourself. And, um, and never ever steal anybody else's tomatoes because how would you like it if um, somebody reached into your grocery bag when you're leaving the store? You wouldn't. You would be just totally shocked that they were stealing from you like that. Well, it's the same thing. When you're stealing from somebody's yard, it's, well, it's actually worse. Um, but anyway, there you go.